Welcome. Let's take a look at an example of identifying the absolute extrema for a function. Uh, recall that to determine the absolute extrema, if f is a continuous function over a closed bounded interval i, the absolute maximum of f over i and the absolute minimum of f over i must occur at the endpoints of i or at critical points. So, provided our function is continuous over the interval, then we know the absolute max and the absolute minimum on that interval occurs at the endpoints of the interval or at the critical points of the interval. So let's take a look at our function here. f of x equals x plus 4 over x. Now this function is continuous on its domain, and notice that uh, its domain would exclude x equals 0. Now if we look at the interval we're interested in, 0 is not a part of that interval. So on the interval from 1 to 5, our function f of x is continuous. So if we're looking for the absolute extrema of f of x, we need to consider the function value at the endpoints of the interval or at critical points of the function that lie within that interval. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll first find the critical points of our function. Now to find the critical points of our function, we'll need to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. I'm going to rewrite my function as x plus four times x to the negative one. This will allow me to use uh, the power rule to help find the derivative of our second term. So now our derivative, our f prime of x, is 1 plus 4 times negative 1 to the x neg to the negative 1 minus 1. Negative 1, 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So let's rewrite this as 1 minus 4 over x squared. Now recall, we're looking for critical points, so we need to set this function equal to zero and solve for x. So let's go ahead and uh, get a common denominator. So for our first term, we're going to multiply by x squared over x squared so that we create a common denominator of x squared. Now our a derivative function looks like x squared minus 4 over x squared. Now let's go ahead and set this function equal to 0 and find those solutions. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by x squared, I end up with x squared minus 4 equals 0. If I add 4 to both sides of my equation, I end up with x squared equals 4. And then if I take the square root of both sides of my equation, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which means we have x equals plus or minus 2. And so now I need to compare this information to what I know about the interval we're interested in. And notice that only one of those values uh, lies within the interval we're interested in. Mm -hmm. So we will focus on simply x equals 2, as it is in the interval from 1 to 5. So what we have here is one source of our critical numbers comes from setting the derivative equal to zero. And from that source, uh, the only critical number we're interested in is x equals two. Now we do have a second source for critical numbers. That is where 
the derivative is undefined. And if we look at our function, our derivative function here, um, x squared minus 4 over x squared, there is only one value of x for which this derivative is undefined, and that is x equals 0. However, recall that the interval we're interested in is the interval from 1 to 5. And x equals 0 does not lie in that interval from 1 to 5. So we can disregard this uh, critical point. So uh, 0 is not an element of the interval from 1 to 5. So we disregard this critical point. This critical point. Okay, so it looks like we only have one critical point to be considered for this problem. So remember we need to check the endpoints of the interval and the critical points that are in the interval. So we'll check f at 1. We will be checking f at our critical point 2 and then our other endpoint f at 5. So f at 1 is 1 plus 4 over 1, which simplifies to be 5. f at 2 is 2 plus 4 over 2, and that simplifies to be 4. And then we have f at 5, which is 5 plus 4 over 5. And if we get a common denominator and combine, we get uh, 29 fifths, or you could think of it as 4 and, I'm sorry, 5 and 4 fifths. And so from this information, we identify our absolute maximum and our absolute minimum. The absolute maximum is the largest output value. So our absolute maximum is the uh, 5 and 4 fifths. So absolute max of 5 and 4 fifths. And that happens when x equals 5. And then our absolute minimum will be the smallest of the output values. And we'll have an absolute minimum of 4. And that happens at x equals 2. I hope you find this helpful.